Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through an introduction to rational numbers on a number line. We have two sections. We will start with identifying rational numbers on a number line and then move on to graphing rational numbers on a number line. Now remember, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction of two integers. The decimal form either terminates or repeats. If you need more help with what rational numbers are, I have a video covering this. That link is in the description. Now for this section, we have two number lines with rational numbers graphed on them. We need to identify, we need to figure out what those numbers are. Let's jump into our examples, starting with numbers one through five. Looking at this number line and any number line really, we need to understand that if we look at zero, we have positives to the right and negatives to the left. So starting at zero, positives to the right, negatives to the left. Now as far as moving along a number line, moving right or up a number line, we increase in value. Moving to the left or down a number line, we decrease in value. Now before we jump into number one, we need to figure out what we're working with as far as how this number line is presented. Well, the lowest number in value shown on the number line is negative three. And then the highest value shown on the number line is positive three. In between each number, the number line is split into four sections, fourths. So this number line is showing fourths. So if we look at zero and we go right, we have one fourth, two fourths, which is one half, three fourths, one, one and one fourth, one and a half, one and three fourths, two, and so on. And if we look at zero and go left, we have negative one fourth, negative two fourths, which is negative one half, negative three fourths, negative one, negative one and one fourth, negative one and a half, negative one and three fourths, negative two, and so on. Looking at number one, we have point A. So where is point A on the number line? Well, point A is right here and it is at negative two. So point A is at negative two on the number line. Next, we have point B, which is right here. So B is in between zero and one. We have one fourth, two fourths, or one half, and then three fourths. So point B is at one fourth on the number line. Now I do wanna mention fractions can be written as decimals and decimals can be written as fractions. So it's good to be familiar with both. And fourths are common, so knowing the fractional and decimal forms will be helpful. I have some notes in the corner right here for this. One fourth equals 25 hundredths. Two fourths, which is one half, equals five tenths. And then three fourths equals 75 hundredths. And if you're wondering why one half only goes to the tenths place, why we only have five tenths there, well, we can write it as 0 0.50, so 50 hundredths. But remember, zeros to the right of a decimal are not needed, so we can just write it as five tenths. So let's write one fourth in decimal form as well. So this is 25 hundredths. Let's move on to number three, where we have point C which is right here. Point C is between one and two. So this is one and one fourth, one and a half, and then one and three fourths. So point C is at one and three fourths on the number line, which as a decimal is one decimal 75. So one and 75 hundredths. Next, we have point D, which is right here between negative two and negative three. So we have negative two and one fourth, negative two and two fourths, which is negative two and a half, and then negative two and 
3 fourths. So point D is at negative 2 and a half on the number line, which in decimal form is negative 2.5. So negative 2 and 5 tenths. And then we can wrap up this first number line with number 5. We have point E, which is right here. And we are in between 0 and negative 1. We have negative 1 fourth, negative 2 fourths, or negative 1 half, and then negative 3 fourths. So point E is at negative 3 fourths on the number line. Written as a decimal, we have negative 0 0.75. So negative 75 hundredths. Let's move on to numbers 6 through 10, where we will be working with a different number line. So starting at 0 and going to the right, it looks like we have fifths here. So we have 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 1, and then so on. Moving to the left, we have negative 1 fifth, negative 2 fifths, negative 3 fifths, negative 4 fifths, negative 1, and so on. So looking at number six, we have point V, which is right here. Point V is at zero on the number line. Moving on to number seven, we have point W, which is right here. Point W is in between zero and negative one. We have negative one fifth, negative two fifths, negative three fifths, negative four fifths, and then negative one. So point W is at negative two fifths on the number line. And then as far as fifths, here are the decimal forms. So negative two fifths is negative four tenths. Moving on to number eight, we have point X, which is right here. So point X is in between one and Two. We have one and one fifth, one and two fifths, one and three fifths, and then one and four fifths. So point X is at one and four fifths on the number line, which in decimal form is one decimal eight. So one and eight tenths. Next, for number nine, we have point Y, which is right here. So again, we are between one and two. So this is at one and one fifth. So one and one fifth for point Y. And in decimal form, this equals one decimal two. So one and two tenths. And then lastly, point Z, is right here in between negative one and negative two. So this is negative one and one fifth, negative one and two fifths, negative one and three fifths, and then negative one and four fifths. So point Z is at negative one and three fifths on the number line, which equals negative one decimal six, so negative one and six tenths in decimal form. So there's how to identify rational numbers on a number line. Let's move on to graphing rational numbers on a number line. Here are our examples for graphing rational numbers on a number line. Let's jump into numbers one through five. As far as our first number line here, we have fourths represented on the number line, just like number one from the first section. Now let's look at number one. We have negative three. So we need to graph negative three, which is going to be to the left of zero. Negative three is right here. So this is negative three. Next, for number two, we have one half, which is positive, so we are going to be to the right of zero. One half is going to be in between zero and one. We have one fourth, two fourths, which is one half, and then three fourths. So this is one half right here. 
Moving on to number three, we have negative one and three fourths. So we need to look in between negative one and negative two. We are to the left of zero here. So looking in between negative one and negative two, we have negative one and one fourth, negative one and two fourths, or negative one and a half, and then negative one and three fourths. So negative one and three fourths is right here. Moving on to number four, we have two and 75 hundredths. This is in decimal form. Now fractions can be written as decimals and decimals can be written as fractions. So we need to know both and fourths are common. So knowing the fractional and decimal forms will be helpful. I have some notes to the right that will help us with this. So 0 0.75, 75 hundredths, that equals 3 fourths in fractional form. So this is 2 and 3 fourths in fractional form. So let's graph 2 and 75 hundredths or 2 and 3 fourths. That's positive, so we are going to be to the right of 0, and this is going to be in between 2 and 3. So looking in between two and three, we have two and one fourth, two and two fourths, two and a half, and then two and three fourths. So two and three fourths, two and 75 hundredths is right here. And I'll write it in decimal form since it was originally in decimal form. Moving on to number five, we have negative 25 hundredths, which equals negative one fourth in fractional form. So we can use this right here. Now negative one fourth is going to be to the left of zero and in between zero and negative one. We have negative one fourth, then negative two fourths, so negative one half, and then negative three fourths. So negative one fourth or negative 25 hundredths is right here. And I will write this in decimal form. Let's move on to numbers six through 10. And we are going to be working with a different number line here. And this number line is split into halves. So as far as positives, we have one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half and so on. And then as far as negatives, we have negative one half, negative one, negative one and a half, negative two, negative two and a half and so on. Now taking a look at number six, we have two and three tenths. Now this is not exactly on a half. So we will need to estimate and we can get this pretty close. So again, this isn't going to be graphed exactly on a half. We have to use what we are given and what we know to estimate and get this as close as possible. Now two and three tenths equals two and three tenths in fractional form. We can see that this is going to be in between two and three. Now let's look at two and a half. Is two and three tenths less than two and a half or greater than two and a half? Well, we know that two and a half equals two and five tenths. Those are equivalent. And since we are comparing tenths here, we know that three tenths is going to be less than five tenths. Two and three tenths is less than two and a half. So we know that two and three tenths will be between two and two and a half. So we can estimate and get it close. It's going to be about right here. So this is two and three tenths. So sometimes we may have something we need to graph that isn't exactly on the number line. Again, use what we are given, use what we know, to estimate and get it as close as possible. Let's do another one like this and move on to number seven. We have negative four and nine tenths. 
which written as a fraction is going to be negative four and nine tenths. So this will not be exactly on a half, but we know that this will be left of zero and it will be in between negative four and negative five. But let's narrow this down and look at negative four and a half. Now is negative four and nine tenths greater than negative four and a half or less than negative four and a half? So is it going to be greater than and closer to negative four or less than and closer to negative five? Well, negative four and nine tenths is less than negative four and a half. It's closer to negative five than it is to negative four. So this is going to be in between negative four and a half and negative five. And negative four and nine tenths is pretty close to negative five. It's only one tenth away. So we will put it right here. So this is negative four and nine tenths. Next, let's move on to number eight. We have negative one and five tenths, which is negative one and a half. Five tenths is equal to a half. And we can write this in fractional form as well, negative one and a half. So this will be to the left of zero and in between negative one and negative two. And this does land on the half. So this is negative one and a half. Negative one and five tenths in decimal form. Moving on to number nine, we have nine halves, nine over two. This is an improper fraction. Let's convert it to a mixed number to make it a little easier to graph. We do that by dividing the numerator, the top number, by the denominator, the bottom number. So nine divided by two. How many whole groups of two in nine? Well, four. That gets us to eight. So we have a remainder of one, and then we keep the denominator of two the same. So nine over two equals four and a half as a mixed number. So let's graph four and a half. So this is going to be to the right of zero and in between four and five. It lands on the half, so this is four and a half right here. And we will write the original improper fraction, nine over two. Now, another way to do this one, since our denominator is two here, we are working with halves, we can count off nine halves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we land in the same spot. Lastly, for number 10, we have negative 25 eighths. So negative 25 over eight, which is another improper fraction. So let's convert it to a mixed number. And again, we do that by dividing the numerator, negative 25, by the denominator, eight. So we have a negative divided by a positive. That's going to give us a negative. So negative 25 divided by eight, well, we get negative three and one eighth. Now let's take a look at graphing this on the number line. Now negative three and one eighth is not going to be exactly on a half. So we need to estimate. Now we know this will be left of zero to the left of zero, it's negative. And then it's going to be in between negative three and negative four. And then to narrow this down even further, let's look at negative three and a half. So is this greater than negative three and a half and closer to negative three or less than negative three and a half and closer to negative four? Well, negative three and one eighth is greater than negative three and a half. So it's going to be in between negative three and negative three and a half. Negative three and one eighth is closer to negative three than it is to negative four. So let's put negative three and one eighth right here. It's really close to negative three. It's only one eighth away. 
and I will write the original improper fraction. So negative 25 over eight. So there you have it. There's an introduction to rational numbers on a number line. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.